How's it going everyone? This is K Collections. For all those who couldn't summon Archer Ishtar during Christmas or New Year's, well, this is the closest thing we'll have to a pity system. Or it's just DW's way of throwing salt in our faces. I think it's the latter. All the Reen fans out there rejoice because we'll get a Welfare Ishtar. I'll break down her stat skills, give some CE and team recommendations to see how good of a servant she is. Starting with her stats, Ishtar has the second highest attack out of the 4 star riders, but she has the lowest HP. She's a quick focus servant with pretty bad star gens. Brave chains involving her buster and quicks will give you barely 20 stars, and P gains are good if you perform an arts quick arts brave chain, which will give you about 30% charge. Arts quick quick will give you around 20%. Those two are the main combinations you'll perform most of the time. Ideally, if you can, you want to perform an NP quick brave chain, which will give her about 20% NP if there's three enemies, and about 30 stars or so bonus included. For active skills, her first ability is amazing. Offering support to quick and buster type servants, the bonus MP gains will help your team. It's also something Ishtar specifically needs. The skill has great downtime period, waiting only two turns when maxed out, making it very consistent. Keep in mind, majority of her attacks are quick and art, so she won't benefit as much with the buster buff. Her second skill has a one-hit evasion with a tremendous boost to crit damage. Thankfully, Ishtar has high star weights, so all you need to do is provide the stars for her. Activate this skill as soon as possible when facing strong enemies. Yes, you will most likely lose out on the crit buff, but it'll protect her from getting hurt, especially if they're known for dealing crit damage. You should only save this skill if there's an incoming NP attack, or when Ishtar has significant amount of stars to use. Summer Breaker is pretty awesome, with a downfall of being stunned next turn. Basically, this increases Ishtar's strengths and weaknesses, making her a good burst servant. When combined with her second skill, her crit damage will have a 100% boost. The problem is that you'll need someone else to generate the stars for her. This skill is meant for her NP attack. Ishtar's only way to create lots of stars is with her NP, so unless you can use her attack consecutive turns, you'll be wasting the crit damage buff of this skill if the stars aren't created the turn prior. Therefore, you need another strong star generator. What's great is that she'll have an invincibility for one attack. Try your best to use her evasion skill to dodge NP attacks. Again, Breaker is best used with her NP, but the invincibility does offer you a nice backup just in case. Now, when combined with her first skill, Ishtar's buff for NP gains will be at 70%. To give you perspective, with an Arts Quick Arts Brave Chain, she can charge up to 50% NP. There's really no wrong or right ways of using this skill. You can use it for NP gains, for survivability, crit damage. The suggestions I gave you are things to consider. Really, you just have to plan ahead. Max out our first skill first because you want that support, second skill, then third skill. Passives are great, it enhances her primary playstyle. Her Noble Phantasm basically deals damage to all enemies, which also increases her quick performance before the damage. The buff is an overcharge, so you want to use this last with an NP chain for better performance. If you activate her first and third skill together when performing a quick brave chain, Ishtar can generate 40 to even 50 stars. She will also charge about 25 to 30% NP. This is without crit damage or overkill. Keep in mind though, that's only if there's three enemies. Since her NP is an AoE, the less number of enemies, the less she'll gain. For CE recommendations, Imaginary Around offers the highest percentage, but if you want to focus on either crit damage or NP damage, then one of these two works perfectly, but the overall goal is to increase her quick. Arts and Quicks are her main attacks she'll use, so increasing them is ideal. Tranquility is perfect for NP spamming. Merry Sheep, which will be out this Christmas, and holy crap, it's a gorgeous CE. I love, I love the artwork. It's perfect if you want to focus more on crit and star gen. Crit and NP damage are two of Ishtar's strengths. Supper is best used for shorter battles because of the starting NP. Summer Little is better for overall NP gain consistency, which is best suited for longer battles. For Servant Recommendations, Ishtar self-stun isn't the worst thing in the world, but can really hurt you at times. BB can remove debuffs, and the healing that comes with the skill will be higher since Ishtar's skill also increases HP recovery. BB's skill also grants debuff immunity for one time, which allows you to remove existing debuffs while preventing the self-stun. They share the same normal command cards, offering better synergy, and BB can help Ishtar spam her NP attack. Caesar is a great quick ally, benefiting from her quick and buster buff while being able to generate some stars with his NP attack. Obviously, Ishtar will benefit from his attack NP and crit buff. Caesar, however, isn't a consistent star generator, so you may need a third servant for that role. 
Enkidu is actually a solid choice as a star generator. I wouldn't really recommend assassins because you'll typically face casters using Ishtar. If not, sure, use Jack or Fuma or any other assassins. Enkidu needs a guaranteed quick buff since his own skill is random. Being Buster and Quick Focus, he'll benefit from Ishtar's buff. Only problem is that he'll probably try to kill her given their history. Now, if you don't want your servants to start killing each other, Melt is by far one of the best offensive allies to use with Ishtar. She's a star generator who has class advantage over casters and assassins, therefore covering both strengths and weaknesses. Melt has 3 quicks and 2 buster attacks, so she'll fully take advantage of Ishtar's buff. Really, any buster or quick focus servants will work with Ishtar. The buff is really good and consistent, although you should be aware of the team's star weight. If you want Ishtar to crit more often, then use servants with lower star weight. Or if you want the other servants to crit more, make sure they have a star gathering skill that's above hers. Final thoughts on Ryder Ishtar. She's a great servant with strong offensive support, high burst crit damage, reliable skills that has great synergy with her playstyle, and quite consistent, especially if she performs the right combinations. Majority of her skills revolves around her NP, high damage, creating stars, and NP refund. Her naturally high star weight makes her reliable as a crit servant. All you need to do is provide the stars, something Ishtar can somewhat do herself, but you'll need help. If you time her dodge skills effectively, Ishtar has strong survivability even with low HP. She can spam NP attacks if you have the right support. Finally, being an event servant, her NP will be at level 5. For weaknesses, Ishtar's NP gains are horrible if you don't start with an arts attack. She's also not a really good star generator with normal attacks, which is a shame. Most of her effects last one turn, so there's not a lot of flexibility. On the topic of effects, the self-stun can affect your overall momentum. An example would be her creating lots of stars from her NP, but not being able to use them next turn if her debuff isn't removed. Which is bad, because she'll rob most of the stars away from your other servants. So basically, the stun is really bad. Sadly, because of these weaknesses, Ishtar is not the best welfare servant. Not even top 3, but her strengths do outweigh her weaknesses. Ishtar can fit into most teams. With a little help, she can be really effective in challenge quests. Obviously, she's also good as a farmer if you can turn 1 MP with her, and farming's like 90% of this game. Honestly, if she were a banner servant, I'd recommend her. Thankfully, she's free, because I don't know if my heart can take another failed Ishtar summoning. Special thanks to all my patrons for supporting me. If you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon. So, did you get Archer Ishtar? It's okay, I can take the salt. If you didn't get her, will you summon her again? Or are you satisfied with Ryder Ishtar? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Fates content. Follow my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord server. All links are in the description. Have an awesome day, everyone. Good luck. Till next time.